This is what peak League of Legends looks like, and it's in Europe. The most stacked semifinals bracket ever, the Elite Four. And it starts with G2. Where were you when the West rose up? When our current champions slayed expectations, when Perk said, watch me. But see, they're not the heroes this time. The West sleeps safe at night, not because they know G2 will save the day, but because they know G2 are the ones keeping others up at night. Because finally, the West is the one that spares you. Because they're the villains. Enter the current defending world champions, Invictus Gaming. The crownless kings are our heroes. They shocked the world when hometown hero rookie lifted the trophy for China and Seoul. See, import is a dirty word, but rookie is no stranger. He is the champion of China and the owner of the cup. But Invictus Gaming aren't even the kings in China anymore. That's the Phoenix. Burned by the fires of defeat, Doinby has waited five years, four teams, and three international chances to finally have this moment. His raft was swift, and he and FunPlus tore through the LPL, rising while others fell. He ushers in the new era of champion, one that is forged not with raw talent, but carved by sheer determination. Doinby has endured. He has waited years for this crown. But what is a king to a god? Three-time world champion, two-time MSI champion, the winning is team piloted by the greatest player to ever touch the game, Faker. A team that needs no introduction. SK, Telecom, T1 are legends for a reason. The only team worthy to sit upon the world's throne. See, not all championships are created equal. To be the best, you must go through the best. And out of SKT's four world's appearances, Faker has only ever lost once. But gods don't need a crown to rule. And if SKT aren't the champions, they will surely choose the champions. This semifinal is one of Coliseum for those champions. The most stacked final four ever. A domestic title is the bare minimum to even appear. And it starts right now. Welcome back to Worlds 2019, live from the Palazzo Vista Alegre in Madrid. Four iconic teams remain to fight for the Summoner's Cup, and today we kick off the stacked semifinals with Invictus Gaming versus Fun Plus Phoenix. Here you see them through the eyes of the Oppo phone camera, designed to make sure you won't miss a moment of Worlds 2019. Now the fact that we're starting this weekend with the reigning world champions versus the LPL champions highlights the prestige of the organizations left in Worlds 2019. And it's not only the teams, we just heard about some of the icons hitting the rift, and the analysts have prepared their all-pro team for Worlds so far. And it was not easy, Dash. We had a lot of back and forth, we had a lot of conversations about it, but these are the five players that we decided are currently the best performing at this year's World Championship. Yeah, and uh, you guys will see it just in a bit. It's fun to be able to have those conversations about who the best are. The fact that we started with the Shy says a lot because the Shy has been impactful in all aspects. When you saw him on the Akali during group stage, you saw some bad moments in the laning phase, but he instantly redeemed it about like three minutes later in team fights. So he's every top laner's dream of being able to defeat. And I think that's the key word there. It's high impact. Because yes, the Shy, you can see the potential and you can also see that low ceiling. But even if he is 6-0, and high impact, he's going to win you the game. If he's 0-6, he will still be a game changer. And I think that's kind of what edged the Shy out over someone like Khan. Exactly. Exactly. A player that we talked a lot about was what is the difference between Khan and the Shy? And while Khan has been a uh 
a keystone in what has made SKT so successful at this tournament, we feel that the shy, without as many resources, being put in situations that you wouldn't expect other people to turn around, was able to make these plays that have swung games in Invictus Gaming's favor. A contentious conversation in the top lane, but the shy does snag that spot. If we jump on down, though, we find Clid in the jungle. That's not Tian Ras. Yeah, speaking <laughs> of contentious, this is the one that I'll still fight for to this day. Uh, <laughs> like, you make your case. I will start. Case. I'll start with the fact that Clid has been sensational for this team since MSI into this point. Having the conversation about impact, he's had the impactful first 15 minutes to get his team to these moments. So Clid has been amazing. Tian has started to make a name for himself on the international stage, and it's going to be decided soon enough. And I think the biggest difference maker was the fact that when you look at only the quarterfinal performances, he was involved in 92% of SKT's kills. This team plays through Clid. He is what gives them so much of their presence and power. And it's why, for me, he was able to come out ahead of Tien. And the thing is, is we keep using this word, you know, contentious and stacked. And when yeah. you get into the mid lane, like that was probably <laughs> the most, where everyone's like, it, it kind of depends on where your timeline is. You could very easily put Faker yep. if this is group. Caps just popped off in a quarter final. But the reason why edgy, uh, edgy, <laughs> rookie edges out, combine the two right there, is because of the consistency and the potential, which is why we put him in that mid lane. Yeah, and even coming easy. out of group stage for me, like was rookie a was <laughs> the big name, right? Like the fact that, to me, the game that stands out the most is when they went up against Team Liquid, the last game to get out of the group. He just took over the game 1v9. Not only did he have a sensational laning phase performance, but he just used the impact, roamed across the map. A lot of the mid laners, much like we were talking about how the Shy gets a lot of the focus, the same here happens for Rookie. I think the spotlight will be on a lot of these mid laners throughout these semifinals. Yeah, it's going to be close. These players will be, all be the ones that we're looking at and will have the highest impact in their games. The biggest question is, who do we think will be able to edge out on top? Right now we have Rookie, but none of us would be surprised if any of the others came here today. What's crazy to me is just taking a step back and looking at it. For so long, it's been Faker and then everyone else who chases Faker. And Rookie was kind of the first guy that was chasing Faker if you go all the way back to 2014. And now Caps has this thing where he's looking at Rookie, he's looking at Faker, and Doinby's like, no, 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 you yeah. also have to pay attention to me. I am also in this list. And while Caps may not have snagged the spot, his AD carry perks did. He certainly has. The man Uma Yan, as he's claimed the <laughs> title so far this year in Europe, has kind of redefined what it is to play AD carry. And initially, a lot of the conversation was around how, oh, he's bringing mages into the bot lane. He's playing different champions. But so far in this tournament, he's been making a name for himself on Zaya. Frost, it was you who said Zaya is he is the best Zaya in the world. Yeah, let's not mince words. He is the best Zaya in the world. If he gets this champion, you have made a mistake in Drafter. You are recognizing that you are just giving a massive tool to an incredible laner. Yeah, and G2 has certainly recognized that. A lot of the focus is to get him ahead, and they didn't even need to do much helping when they went up against Damwon, and he was able to consistently hit that tone. But for me, of course, talking about who would be the next one, certainly Teddy. Yeah. Like, Teddy consistency throughout the year. This tournament has been really good for him. So between the two of them, it's fun that they're going to be going up against each other in the semifinals match because that's going to decide it. I just love how this conversation around Perks has evolved because coming into the tournament, it was all about how flexible he was as a bot laner, the idea of the mages being able to come in. Yeah. And then here we land in the semifinals and it's just definitively, <laughs> he is the best Zaya in the world. I want to now jump down to last, but certainly not least, the support position. Crisp occupies that spot. And so much of this conversation has been talking talking about kind of like the potential ceiling and those really high highs. But for me, it's finally consistency that won out when it comes to Chris. The support pool is rather shallow when you get to this final four in terms of a high impact player and the consistency to do so. And Chris nails all of it. Yeah, a lot of big name supports came to this tournament and even them kind of started to peel off. Weren't looking nearly as good as they were in the domestic split. But what we saw from Chris was exactly what we saw domestically. Him and Tien had great movements around the map. He was able to protect the top side of the map when it was under fire consistently against the Gam. And then he has been an amazing playmaker. It's fun to still see this level of performance from him. These are some of the players, but the teams competing in the World Semifinals have dominated their regions and the international stage in 2019 with three domestic champions and the reigning world champions in IG still left here in the tournament. We're going to throw it up on the screen, but combined between these four teams, the titles, the international appearances is just astronomical. It certainly is. There is so much success when you look at these four teams. They are champions of their league and they are champions internationally. Like, 
all across the board, all you see is winning. I mean, the reality is, is to ride this ride, you must at least be X tall, and it's at <laughs> least a domestic title. Now, when you look at these stats, they are very heavily skewed and very heavily weighted because we have a team like SKT in the top four, which, no surprise, SKT are the top four. I don't yeah. know if you guys... Right, three of those world <laughs> titles are SKTs. Let's, uh, let's take note of that. But again, no slouches are these other three squads. In particular, you look at G2 Esports, who has long dominated their region and made many in appearance on the internet. National stage. This is where recency starts to dominate the conversation because, yeah, G2 Esports constantly has made international appearances, but it was only really this year when they hit that MSI stroke, and you see Invictus Gaming and FPX have amazing years. IG, well, of course, started out there as in 2018 at the very end being world champions, but FPX took over in both spring, having an amazing regular season. Of course, IG still won out in that one, but landed phenomenally in Summer Split, where FPX are finally able to nail those best of fives. And I don't want this to overshadow a conversation we briefly had about LPL as a region. While looking at these two teams, it, their numbers might pale in comparison to the other two squads. It actually points to something a little bit more interesting, which is that within the LPL, more of those numbers are shared across more teams, it seems. Yeah, when you kind of glow into the conversation historically, things like OMG, RNG, Invictus Gaming, Edward Gaming, now FPX, versus a region like the LCK, which held the title for so long as just being the most dominant region ever. But I think we need to separate the LCK mystique from the SKT mystique. Right. SKT is definitely what props up everyone. And you have your Samsungs and you have your Q Tigers, but it's really the SKT show. In a sense, a breath of life here for the LPL against the long-standing dominant team in SKT. And what I love is the fact that there are two competing storylines, because SKT can win it all, and we go back to 2015, <laughs> where the conversation is Korea is the new Full circle, boys. baby. And then it... Otherwise, you can see G2, IG, FPX changing the conversation, and it's a new day for, you know, League of Legends entirely. Well, of course, they got the semifinals first, but on November 10th, two teams will fight for the Summoner's Cup live from the Accor Hotels Arena in Paris. Now, before the action, be sure to tune in at 1 p.m. CET, 4 a.m. Pacific time for the World Championship opening ceremony presented by MasterCard. Now, tomorrow, we'll get a rematch of the MSI semifinals as three-time world champions SKT look to get revenge on EU's last hope, G2. How can you not be excited for this best of five? This is the rematch, as you were saying, Dash, and what a best of five that was, because I remember going into it and thinking, G2, not favorites in this. It's SKT in a best of series. They looked fantastic in the group stage, but then G2 showcased their creativity. They flexed their ability to demonstrate that adaptation throughout a best of five, and we had one of the best best of fives that we've ever had internationally. And Vettius, I've got the secret. So the secret is, is that you cast that best of five, <laughs> and who won? Uh, that G2 did in fact win. And so you're saying that every best of five you cast that G2 are in, they win? There has been a trend of that, yes. Are you casting tomorrow? Uh -oh. We'll have to wait and see. Oh. I guess we'll have to wait there and it is. see. <laughs> the bait and hook right there. Tune in tomorrow to find out if Vettius will move EU into another world final. But uh, th this is absolutely a stacked semi-final uh, that we will see play out, of course. But there is history involved here. And Raz, I think, uh, you know, the question remains for SKT, who has even cited this G2 loss from MSI as being a catalyst for a lot of their change in playstyle. How will they have actually reshaped themselves to take down this EU giant this time around? Well, we saw it in the first game of the tournament for them, right? Because we thought there would be a slower turnaround team as they usually are, but they got the meta immediately. And they're fast-paced right from the get-go. And they even hid a lot of what their strategies would be, you would imagine, in quarterfinals when they went up against Splice. So I think G2 won't even... I think they will give SKT a whole lot of respect because of the growth that they had throughout the year. But here's the thing. The narrative has been changed where SKT are looking for revenge. When was the last time you ever had oh, to say that true. from your wrath? It's always, who's going to get revenge on SKT? Who can take down SKT? G2 are one step away from the Grand Slam. They are looking to win it all to do what no other team has done before. I don't know if I ever want to be on the rift with an angry faker, but that's what <laughs> G2 will have to do tomorrow. Now, the action starts today with IG versus FPX. And earlier, Shox caught up with Ning to learn more about the jungle matchup. Now, Tien, your competitor in the jungle, has been lauded as one of the best performing junglers this World Championship. How do you feel you'll match up versus him? Xiaotian在这次赛程里面被很多人说是整个赛程当中最强的一名打野。你对上他，你有什么样的预期？呃，他确实现在就是很强嘛，因为看起来势头很很猛，然后。
我认为他不能说是最强嘛，但是强是称得上的。然后我对他的话就，就因为我也很久没有打比赛了。上一次就是遇到他的时候，他好像还被我吊起来，就是在 LPR 的时候还被我暴打。然后，希望今天的话也可以跟 LPR 的时候一样。I think he is indeed a very strong player. I wouldn't say he's the best player, but definitely a very strong player. I haven't played the game in a long time, but the last time I played Tian, I destroyed him. So I want the same thing to happen that happened in the LPL to happen today. Well, we'll be looking out for that. It speaks to your confidence. Now, due to IG's up and down summer split and the way you qualified for Worlds, there were some question marks about your form. How would you compare IG's form before the tournament to right now ahead of the semifinals? 因为你们夏季赛的起伏跟你们在资格赛的一个表现，其实很多人觉得，呃，你们可能呃，就是不不是那么的稳定。那你可以比较一下现在准备进入四强赛的 IG 的一个状态，跟之前来世界赛呃以前的这个状态来比较一下吗？呃，首先就是我们能到四强嘛，那当然说是我们现在的状态要比呃夏季赛还有冒泡赛的时候状态要好很多的，然后。呃，然后也赢了格里芬嘛，因为格里芬也是个特别强的对手。然后我们现在状态应该没有什么太大问题吧？就目前来看的话，呃，如果要是说真正看的话，还是要看在赛场上的发挥，我觉得。I think our condition is a lot better than it was in Summer Split and in the Gauntlet, and we just defeated Griffin. So I think in terms of our condition, we're really fine. But it just kind of depends on how we perform on the day as well. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much, Ning. Good luck today. Back over to you guys. Thank you very much, Shox. A bit of confidence coming into this matchup, citing the last two teams, or times rather, that these teams faced off. But this is a regional clash of epic proportions, as the two best LPL teams from 2019 will battle for a spot in the World Finals. We have the reigning champions in IG, who've returned to form this tournament, but need to reach even higher if they want to defend their title. Yeah, definitely need to do that. Uh, summer <laughs> Split was a down moment for them, and it took them a lot to even get to the world stage to start. Yeah, and the thing is, is the Invictus gaming that you saw lift the cup, the shy, rookie, these names constantly being talked about, that wasn't the case. Rookie took a, a leave of absence for a personal emergency. The shy was all over the board in terms of his variance and volatility in play. And it was really their ADC in young Jackie Love, yes. who really stuck to his guns and helped hard carry Invictus gaming to the this point to allow Rookie and the Shy the opportunity to redeem themselves. And I think that's the biggest point when it comes to redemption, because when we think about the story so far, it has been a difficult summer split especially, but we saw glimmers of their performances in their gauntlet run and in the playoffs. And I think that when we look at Rookie specifically, he was someone that we mentioned on the All Pro list. He is someone that we look at who is now fulfilling the potential, living up to the expectations that were put upon him. And it's those moments that give you faith if you're an IG fan. The fact that they can make these happen on a consistent basis is your only hope. Because Rookie, for the longest time, has been regarded as the best mechanical mid laner in the world. And these are high praises to have. So the fact that there were even any doubts throughout the summer split is, of course, like a big worry for an IG team that's based off mechanics. Because the thing is, is that form is temporary, but class is forever. Yeah. And you know that Rookie is a classy player. The question is not if, it is when. When do Invictus Gaming return to world championship form? And for FPX, if that's today in this best of five, that's mighty unlucky. And he's not the only one, because accompanying Rookie is, of course, the Shy. Someone that, during the summer split, did help alongside Jackie Love, not to the same degree, but again, many questions were being raised about his performance. What level will we see from the Shy? And you only have to look on your screen right now to see the level from this world-class top laner. It's insane, because like three minutes before this, he can put your team in a bad position, but then immediately just kind of get it right back. Like the, the fact that they, if they're ever in a goal deficit, you can rely on the Shy to just outperform, outskill in team fights to get you back into it. That's why a lot of people look to the Shy and say, okay, just put the ball in his core. Gold percentage, like anything, get the gold in his pockets and he will do you good work. I mean, he's a high variance player, right? But yeah. as we've talked about, even in an 06 situation, the Shy will still find a way to be active and impactful on the map. Of course, while IG rose to fame in 2018, this year has kind of been the surge of FPX as they culminated in their first domestic title just this year. And frankly, it's about damn time. I mean, Doinby has been a staple of the LPL for so long. 
four different teams out of all of those teams. He's constantly finishing the domestic split right there in first. There was a single blemish on his record, a single split where things dropped the ball, but he was never able to convert it in playoff. Yeah, in, the, in his career, if they just gave him a title at the end of the regular season, he would have a whole lot of titles. He'd be <laughs> carrying a whole lot of chips just except for that one, right? Because like in the end of the day, it matters how you deal with those best of five when the pressure is on. They were able to nail that in the summer split. And it wasn't just him. The fact that he was, you know, flanked by Tian, Gimgun, LWX, all of these players who are just phenomenal. The MVP of that series was crisp. So he had an amazing team, and it's going to be a team-like performance that's going to get them over this hump. I do want to pull us back, though, for just a second and talk about the last time that these two teams met because we heard Ning talking about it. He was the one who got the better of FPX that time around. So, Vedius, recap for us. Well, I mean, Frost talked about the blemish on their record. For the summer split, this was their biggest blemish because this team was on track to being the most dominant LPL team ever, and it was Invictus Gaming that ruined it. And what was fascinating was the way in which they did it. Rookie was trying to outpace Doinby's typical roaming style by picking a better roamer and having greater impact around the map very early yeah, on into the game. They kept rushing up into the top lane. The team fight started to go for FPX. And then really it was the final game where Ning got his Jarvan and just dropped the dropped the ball yeah. on, uh, on FBX there. What's really funny whenever there's this level of regional familiarity is oh. that Invictus Gaming, and this is the, you know, the point that you're hitting on, the fact that IG just looked too damn good in a lot of these team fights at the very end of it. So IG, incredible solo laners. And the only thing they're worried about when they go up against FPX is the fact that you can't really track them, that Doombi is going to be moving quite consistently along with Tien. So they just try and pick for Rome like they did in the first game as Talia to try and always be on the move to stop Doombi from achieving that. FPX aside, they're like, okay, we have to deal with the first 10 minutes, right? Solo laners are going to be incredibly strong. Let's pick for lanes and dominate from that point. And so you really just get to see teams over-prioritizing the enemy team's strength. And the thing is, is that even though these teams have faced each other, you just saw the footage of their last best of three that they clashed. Mm. The element that you have to add here is familiarity. These teams were in the same region. They faced multiple times. They probably scrimmed together. And that completely changes the dynamic when you're going into a best of five. It means that whoever wins on the other side of the bracket, SKT or G2, are looking at FPX and IG. And you can't really draw anything from this series mm. because these could be strategies that are simply deployed because you know Doinby's going to roam. And Rookie's like, all I got to do is outroam this guy. Whereas when Rookie's against Faker or Caps, maybe he's like, I just got to blast this guy 1v1 in lane. And that's what I think makes this matchup very interesting because I on Twitter called IG a team that is the best solo queue team in the world. <laughs> and the reason why I said that is because individually they seem to play extremely well, but as a team, that is what they lacked. And Raz, you were saying this just moments ago where it feels like you're going from the best team in the world versus some of the best players in the world. And the problem with this solo queue mentality or individualistic approach is that you have situations like this where you don't always think about the setup of the map. You don't always think about the next best step, and you can easily be punished for it. I mean, look at the map. There's no reason for the Shy to be there. He just rocks in the blue buff like, I can take this, right? No, mate, you can't take this. And right. it makes Invictus Gaming so unpredictable. Mm. The Kog'Maw flanking TP. The Kog'Maw <laughs> flanking yeah. TP. Because if it works, it would be epic. <laughs> and that's the thing, is that I know this happened when they went up against Griffin, but you're probably going to be seeing that times 10 when they go up against out FPX because of the mind games that come with it. The confidence from FPX saying, well, group for it, we're a better team fighting team versus F Invictus Game that's saying, well, we're just the better players. Level one, you're going to be seeing action. Level two, you're going to be seeing action. Can you that's what happens in the LPL a lot of times. They're like, look, the best answer is just to keep moving forward. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to be predictive there and be like, okay, I predict that 10 times they're going to teleport flank with a cog oh and you could actually be right because <laughs> yeah. it's this game here. And, and I love what you two are saying because we need to set the expectation. It's going to be bloody. This series will be bloody. It will be fast-paced. It will be a conventional LPL game in the sense that any expectation needs to be thrown out the window because when they hit the rift, they will have blood in their eyes and they will be looking to fight their opposition. Well, that's a bit about the teams. Let's talk a bit about the players and the way that they'll match up together. Of course, we've got to start in the mid lane as it was the most contentious in the all pro team voting. It is in some ways the most contentious here in this matchup as well. I mean, you basically have a guy who made his reputation as being the best mechanical mid laner in the world in rookie versus super carry Doinby. And super carry Doinby is not a super carry him 
himself. He makes his team mm. super carries. It's Unless a, he's on rise. <laughs> <laughs> it is about how Doin B plugs into the rest of the FPX to make them more than the sum of their parts versus just the raw power of Rookie. That's why I love the fact that his name, Doin B's like, nickname is Super Carry, because today he's going up against Superman. Like, <laughs> like, you actually just need to do everything you can, maybe bring in the Kryptonite to actually just depower Rookie. And so that's why this matchup is so fun, because it's going to be people piling into the mid lane to either support Rookie or to just destroy him. Both members have been big parts of the success that these teams have found so far at Worlds, but we've got to move on to the next position, which would be that jungle. Ning already said it. He's feeling confident, but I know, He's I know you're a fan <laughs> of the other side of the rift there, as Ning being confident is not any different from Ning's <laughs> last day. <laughs> like, Does that say 18? That don't say 18. How many junglers are in the Look, tournament? You don't need to be in your lanes if your laners are solo killing their <laughs> opponents. Okay, I feel like this is like rock, paper, scissors between Doin B and Rookie, like who gets what matchup, who's getting to the side lane. But in straight like Tian versus Ning, I think Tian is just the better jungler here. But Ning, Ning is that wild card. Yes. I think you say it best, Fettius, where maybe he just pops off and you get that MVP world final performance, but we frankly haven't seen it up until this point. I don't like calling him a coin flip player because I don't think you have um, dramatic shifts in his play right. style from game to game. I think you get the same Ning every game. Why I call him a wild card is because you can't predict him. Ah. You can't read his plays. It's like Uno. And, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so as a result, it means that you do not know how things will play out. Sometimes it looks incredibly dominant. Sometimes it doesn't. But you know that he's going to take these risks, yeah. take things that don't always make sense. And sometimes it pays off. Sometimes it doesn't. My mind will always implode in a lot of Ning's games because I remember <laughs> Spring Split just like, he had the most MVPs on his team for a long time because he is that kind of player that will just win games for you. Yeah. And then you're right, other games don't look too good. And I wonder what it is going to be today, but I am, an, I am a TN fanatic. Well, so then what's the approach for TN? Because if you're looking at somebody who, who you just, you cannot predict, who you cannot assume the actions of, does TN just devise a game plan independent of Ning and stick to that? Or is he, is he meant to corral this wild card? Look, defensive Wards. Get eyes on him on the map. Did he just ask two LPL teams to ward? <laughs> Defensively. That is literally it, because a lot of the times there were moments in the LPL where Tien will get the best of him simply because he will obviously know where he's trekking to. Yeah. And as long as you have eyes on where he's going, that's where Ning just falls flat in his face. And that's what I'm looking out for. The defensive player in this matchup, I think, will get the better of it, but I... I always say this, it never turns out the way I want it to. <laughs> I think the spark notes is, is that Ning plays through his laners. It's much more about just consistently yep. ganking for guys like Rookie and the Shy, yeah. whereas Tian is leading the charge for FPX, and it's how Doinby kind of follows his lead. So one team plays more through their jungler, which is Invictus Gaming play more through their solo lanes. Well, it's that time, my favorite time of the countdown, where I ask the three <laughs> of you to stake your credibility on a singular prediction. So Raz, starting with you, one of these two LPL teams is going through. Will IG defend their title, or will FPX rise to the occasion? Look, I would be a fool, and I've been a fool many times when it comes to these predictions, to stake everything on a team that's unpredictable. <laughs> I go for consistency, and what we got from FPX has been just that. We're all, like, the semi, like the summer final champions, of course, I will put my name on them. I think FPX will take it. I still have it as a 3-2. Right. A few hate makers will land. All right, Vettius. I'm completely aligned with Raz. Consistency is the key for me. And the way I see it, IG's only win condition is getting the Shy and Rookie ahead. And I think that is easier said than done against a jungler like Tian. I think it will be bloody, I think it will be messy, and I think that we can go the full stretch into the five games, but at the end of the day, consistency will win out for me. Frosk. I've also got FPX 3-2. I do think that they're playing with a fully stacked deck versus Invictus Gaming, who are playing a couple of card shorts right now. But that said, I do want to say on the other side, we talked about familiarity, and I want to bring up this word of belief. A team like Invictus Gaming to have belief that they can beat you because they've already done it domestically is terrifying, especially when the spotlight is its brightest on a world stage. I think Invictus Gaming will prove today that they are here to defend their world championship, which is why I think this one will go right down to the wire. Well, and as you say that, it's clear the fans may think very much the same thing. In fact, calling it in 3-1 fashion. Oh. I'm personally very happy that the three of you all predicted five games. As you may be aware, I'm a little bit 
bit under the weather, and I did manage <laughs> to run to the doctor this week, and he prescribed me. It's a prescription this weekend for two full five games. <laughs> Excellent. As long as we hit full five games, I'm told that I'll be cured and ready to go for Paris just next week. But what is it about this series? I mean, aside from, you know, closeness uh, within the teams or just the p- pure caliber it's of variance. it. That really, okay, variance is what makes it go to five. It yeah. is the volatility. It is the variance. It is the fact that it doesn't matter if game one is a 25-minute smash. These can all be 25-minute smashes, and it can be Invictus Gaming or FPX on either side of that coin. And both teams will ride the hype. So really, it's just down to Spain. How loud are they going to be? Ooh, that's a good <laughs> question. I know they've been loud throughout the tournament so far. And with that, today, it's the battle of the LPL champions. And with the finals appearance on the line, it's going to be one hell of a fight.